Hi, this is JNM with a tutorial on how to create an animated timer asset with Blender and use it in Unity 2017. I will add a C Sharp script to control how long this animation should run. So first let's create the animation with Blender. It is a very simple model, a cylinder, low poly, and I will add it here, scale it and snap it to the grid. I switch to the edit and wireframe mode with edge selection. Then I select the edges at the bottom or at the top and snap them to the grid with grid snapping enabled. After that I unwrap the model, I press U and then choose Reset and then I add my low poly material like in some other videos before for this kind of low poly models. So I open up here the UV image editor and here's my texture and now I scale this down and move the UV islands which are all the same after the reset to a particular color. I choose the red one. All right, now the cylinder is textured and to animate it, I will add a bone. The 3D cursor is at the zero position. Then I press Shift A and add the single bone. Then I select X-ray so that we can see it fully. And the bone has the perfect size from the bottom to the top of the cylinder. If the top of the bone wouldn't fit to the top of the cylinder, you would have to switch to edit mode and adjust the bone. Okay, the last thing is to add the faces at the top of the cylinder. I select the outer edge, press E, return, then S, zero, select all and remove the doubles. That's it. And finally, we define the bone as parent of the cylinder, therefore select the cylinder in object mode, after that also the bone with the shift key pressed and then press Ctrl and P and select with automatic weights. And when I switch to pose mode now and select my bone and press S and then the C key to constrain it to the Z axis, we can scale the cylinder like that. Okay, great, now we are ready to create the animation. Be sure to have this little red button pressed to enable automatic keyframes and select Lock Scale. Then open a new window and choose Dope Sheet. So we're still in pose mode and instead of Dope Sheet, I choose the Action Editor and create a new action and call it Timer. Then I select the first frame, I press the S key to scale the bone then I press C to constrain it to the Z axis and type in 0.02 to scale it down. And this is the first keyframe. Then I move to frame number 100. And in this keyframe I want to bring the model to its original size. So I will choose Pose, Clear Transform, All. And that's it, here's our animation. All right, next step is to export this. I switch to the object mode and select both the model and the bone. You can do this by hovering over the icon here of the parent object in the hierarchy and press the control key and then the left mouse button. And after that, choose file, export, FBX, armature, mesh and selected objects. And then I export it directly into the project folder of my Unity project. All right, here we are in Unity and here is the imported model with the animation. Here we go. Great, so drag it into the scene and I will scale it just a little bit down. That's fine and now I drag the animation onto the object, onto the game object to create an animator controller. And to keep things organized, I will drag the generated animator controller into the folder animation. Okay, what I want to do now is to play this animation for a particular time period. 
that can be defined by a property dynamically. So I create a C-sharp script for this game object and drag it to the scripts folder. Then let's open the animator controller. You can see the timer animation that we created with Blender is the default state. And I want this animation to run for a particular time range in seconds. So I create a float parameter as multiplier for the speed of the animation. I set the default value to 1 and then I define it as the multiplier parameter for the speed. My intention is to modify this parameter in the script so that the actual length of the animation can be controlled by a script property. So let's have a look at the original length of the animation. It is 4.167 seconds. Then open the script and define a constant for this animation length. We could also use an API method to get this length dynamically, but I think for the sake of this tutorial, defining a constant is alright. The next property that I define is the number of seconds the animation should run. I set the default to, let's say, 5 seconds. And the last thing that we have to implement now is to get the animator in the start method and use its setFloat method to set the multiplier of the animator controller to the length of the animation divided by the number of seconds. So this is just for testing. When I start the game now, the animation will start directly. In the next step, I will add, for example, a trigger that will start the timer when the player is entering. So this animation took 5 seconds to complete. When I set it to 10 seconds, you will see that it will take 10 seconds. Okay, great. So what you can do now is to add a kind of reference object as a child like a cylinder that will indicate how long this animation is going to run. I think I will add this in a later step with Blender. Alright my friends, that's it for today. I really hope you liked the video. And if you liked the channel, then let me know. And don't forget to subscribe to be notified when new tutorials are available. And perhaps you consider supporting me on my Patreon, this would really help to keep the quantity and quality of my uploads. So thanks a lot for watching this and see you soon.